Hey guys, we're back with um, more of your paranormal stories. And I went to my shed and I went and got, well I stole Sam out of Bobby's truck. And I went and got some of my Halloween stuff, got my little haunted house, got my tree back there, got my curses and whatnot book, and, my, and I took my just orange lights. I'm not sorry. All right, now it's all dark and spooky. This time I don't think I'm gonna like react to the story. Maybe I'll react to it like after I've read it, but I want it to be like really creepy. So, you know, this time I'm gonna remember to put creepy pictures and stuff in here. Cause I forgot last time. And I'm trying to be better about making it actually creepy and not just like, oh, I read your story and then I react to it. I want it to be creepy because I know when I watch videos like that, I want to be creeped out. So I'm going to try not to like react to the story. I'm just going to read them and maybe have a little, you know, say my thoughts after each story. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. I'm going to read from my email again. And, uh, I've been receiving some, so let's see how many we have. Okay. Hi, Sammy. So this is what happened a few years ago with my best friend. We were, we went to the cinema to watch Paranormal Activity 5. It was noon, so there was literally no one in the movie room with us. The movie was in 3D, and so we had 3D glasses. We were seated next to the stairs. During the movie, my best friend checked her phone to see if she received any texts and bend over a little bit from her seat. I couldn't see her face. At that moment, a big white smoke shadow climbed the stairs next to us so rapidly. My best friend and I jumped on our seats and I immediately thought maybe it was just a reflection on the glasses. And when my friend turned her face towards me, I saw that she didn't have her glasses on because she checked her phone. And I realized it was not a reflection. We told each other, did you see that? She was so freaked out. It was her first horror movie and that happened. We couldn't move. We didn't even dare stand and leave the movie room. No one could enter the room without us seeing it because the only entrance was next to the screen. We were really all alone. Oh, that was creepy. That would have freaked me out. Those movies scare me anyway. Mm -mm. Hi, Sammy. I'm from your VIP Facebook group. Uh, I'm not sure if you want me to share your name, so I'm not going to. Um... I actually have had several paranormal experiences my whole life. This is a long one. Hold on tight, Sammy. I'm holding on, girl. My brother went on vacation in the summer one year. He left me his house keys and car so I could spend the summer with my friends in his house. My best friend was the only one that slept over in the house because she had some problems with her roommates and could have some quiet evening to think and work her next step out. Um, I was still living with my parents, so I would leave in the morning and meet up with my best friend every morning for breakfast. One day, my best friend and I were chilling in my brother's room. That chill room had a connecting walk-in closet. It's important to mention that the door to the walk-in closet was closed. My best friend and I, for some reason, thought it would be fun to look at possession and exorcism videos. So we did, for hours. One video after another. Out of nowhere, Somebody, or better say, something, knocked on the walk-in closet door three times. We screamed, closed the laptop, but being so shocked, scared, and confused, we sat there staring at the door for a few minutes. We looked at each other in disbelief. What the hell just happened? I remember someone telling me that when the house owner, my brother, is away, the spirits that normally live in the house too take over and watch over the house. My best friend and I are just visitors and disturbing their peace. I told my friend that we pissed them off by watching those videos and not cleaning the house properly. I always was told that good entities like peace, cleanliness, and just to be left alone. So we started cleaning up the house going room to room. I went to the kitchen to wash the dishes. My best friend started to hoover the house after we cleaned them. I'm standing there at the kitchen counter washing our dishes when I hear footsteps behind me. I turned and it was my best friend. I screamed at her sneaking up on me. When I realized her head was tilted to the side and she was holding her head, blood was flowing over her hand down on the floor. I was freaked out. 
She explained while she was hoovering one of the bedrooms, she felt something, a presence, but she ignored it and continued to hoover. A room window opened and slammed on her head. That window was closed. Because my brother had a little child, the windows had a child safety lock on it. It could never just blow open. It freaked me out and pissed me off. I don't know what came over me. I ran like crazy to all the windows and doors making sure they were all closed. The walk-in closet door I opened because I didn't want any more surprises. Where I got the bravery to go and open that door, I still don't know. We cleaned her wound and decided that we would just keep on cleaning and act like nothing had happened. My boyfriend at the time stopped by the house to say hello. He came in, went to the chill room, and sat down next to the walk-in closet. He immediately noticed that we were acting strange. My friend and I felt safer with him there, so we didn't want to freak him out and do something that would make him leave. He kept on pushing though, so I told him. He laughed and said that we were delusional. Accepting that as his answer, I decided to get up and make him some food because he just came from work. I could hear my boyfriend and my friend talking from the kitchen. Out of nowhere, I hear a loud scream coming from the chill room. I immediately ran towards wondering what happened. My boyfriend and best friend were standing by the door, walking backwards into the main hall. The look on their face was a mix of confusion and fear. They told me they were just talking and out of nowhere, an Xbox game fell on the top, fell from the top shelf to the ground. Only it didn't fall directly on the ground. It slammed on the opposite wall and then fell on the ground. How could a game that falls from a shelf crisscross its way to the door? At this point, I just wanted to run out of the house, but I was scared and felt responsible for the house. My boyfriend told us that his grandma once told him that demons and ghosts cannot stand salt. So to the store we went, buying a whole kilo of salt. Back at the house, we spread the salt by every doorway and every window. It was quiet and we felt safe. Well, safer. That night, I had to go home. I still lived with my parents and couldn't stay away. My best friend decided that she would stay in the house. We cleaned up the house, we put salt everywhere, and nothing happened for hours. So she was convinced that nothing would happen. Still, I had a bad feeling that something was not right. I just brushed that idea off as she was steadfast in staying. My boyfriend left with me. When I arrived home, I called my friend and she told me everything was still fine. She was lying in bed talking to some guy and she would do so until she fell asleep. With her sounding so calm and laughing, I thought, oh well, maybe she's right, the salt did work. I hung up the phone, preparing for bed. 20 to 30 minutes passed and my phone started blowing up. By now it was between 2 and 3 a.m. I picked up the phone and it was my friend screaming and crying on the phone. She could hear glass breaking in the kitchen, kitchen cabinets and doors opening and closing, footsteps in the hallway, and her bedroom light was turned off by itself. Her phone call with her guy friend got cut off just before everything started. I cried not knowing what to do and not being able to go to her. On the phone, we started reciting some verses out of our holy book over and over again, both crying on the phone. Me feeling guilty for leaving her alone. 10 minutes into reciting our verses, everything started to calm down. I made her put on some recitings out loud in the room. We both fell asleep listening to the verses on the phone together. Early in the morning, I hurried over there. When I arrived, my friend was still sleeping. In the kitchen, the floor was filled with broken glasses and bowls, some cabinets still open. I guess the salt that was supposed to protect us just pissed them off. I believed it would get rid of them. So like the day before when we cleaned everything, we cleaned with vinegar and salt, every inch of the house, not skipping anything. While we were cleaning, a friend of ours wanted to stop by. She just got kicked out of her house and needed to crash somewhere. She came to the house. When she arrived, I was making us some drinks in the kitchen. After all that cleaning and scary shit, we just wanted some company to take our minds off of it. My best friend opened the door for her, inviting her in. Both of them walked into the kitchen, and the first thing friend number two said is, who was the man in the bathroom? My friend and I ignored her question. What else should we have done? We sat down and watched a movie, laughed and ate until I had to leave for home again. From that day, nothing happened to us in that house. Well, that is, until my brother came back from vacation. A few weeks later, my brother came back from his vacation. It was so quiet in the house for the past weeks and I didn't even bother my brother with what had happened. Until one night, my sister-in-law asked me to come over and watch a movie with her, so I did. My brother was out working the night shift. During our second movie, my brother's oldest son woke up and came into the room. That boy was so pale and frightened. He cried and said he could hear somebody walk in his room. 
frightened, he peeked from other he peeked from under his blanket to see what was happening. He said he saw a man with a big black hat standing over his little brother. My sister-in-law said that it was just a dream and sent him back to bed. I got so irritated by her answer. I feel so bad for him. How terrified he must have felt going back to that room. I decided to tell her what happened. She told me that she doesn't believe in ghosts and she never would. I muted the TV. I thought I had heard something. Heavy footsteps in the room next to us. The boy's bedroom. She absolutely froze listening to the footsteps. The boy started to scream and cry. I jumped over my sister in law running towards the room and she followed. We found all three children huddled up together on the bed crying heavily and shaking. We spent the night sleeping together in the living room until my brother got home. The next afternoon we asked someone to come over and bless the house. Since then we have never experienced anything in the house ever again. <sighs> okay I have to share my thoughts on that. Wow. Okay so that sounds like the shadow man right? Um basically an evil entity demon whatever you want to freaking call it that sounds like either the shadow man or just a really bad entity either way its goal is was to scare but you know what you did the right thing uh the reason that the salt did not work is because you did not bless the house and then line it with salt you are to cast them out and then do the salt and they can't come back in um and the salt is supposed to be blessed as well that's why that didn't work but you did the right thing by getting the house blessed and kicking all that stuff out so good job on that that gave me chills like oh my god <laughs> that gave me freaking chills okay since that one was so long i'm just gonna leave it at those two because i don't want to use up all my good scary story emails in one video um well that was great so, I hope you were as scared and uh, chilly as I was. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for supporting my other passion. You guys are the best. Um, you know, come back again for the next one. Let's get spooky. I mean, it's Halloween all year here. I think I'm going to start introing the video, like, something like, the channel where Halloween never ends or something like that you know I'm still thinking so you know let me let me figure out how I want to intro and outro this channel just be patient with me okay again thank you for watching um bye <laughs>